Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. May 1st, 2020. Couple of minutes to go to the cash close here on this uh, lovely Friday afternoon. And you have to ask yourself in this week of trade, are sellers, are they coming back into this marketplace? Very much so. So in a few minutes, we're actually going to look at some specifics, a couple of trade ideas, a few trades that I'm currently in, a few trades that I'm thinking about getting in. Again, we'll get to the charts and trade ideas in just a moment. Before I get there, I want to address a, uh, a much larger take on the marketplace. We've been flooded, inundated with emails in the last couple of weeks, and it's all in regards to should I get in here? Should I get in here? Can, can, can I buy the XLE right now? Uh, have we bottomed out? Um, should I get long? Should I get short? Slow down there, cowboy. One of the things that I want to make very abundant, very clear, okay? First and foremost, yes. Over the last six weeks, we have just seen absolute chaos and turmoil in the marketplace. At the exact same time, obviously, we've seen the Fed come in with $2.5 trillion, what I kind of call an all-out shock and awe campaign. And meanwhile, many of us, okay, and retail clientele, they're looking for what they should buy next. And I wanna caution you, allow this marketplace to evolve. You're gonna to have to give it a little bit of time. And you know, I can point out so many different underlyings. And you know, this week happens to be really specific towards the energy sector because we saw oil rebound quite substantially in this week of trade, yet the energy sector itself is getting hammered. Another aspect is we saw the financials down pretty considerably, specifically in today's trade. And again, in a moment, I'll actually show you that here in the chart. And of course, people are coming back, like rushing in to try to buy the financials before that next leg to the upside. And as I said, you have got to allow time for this market to place, to really evolve, to unfold. What we're witnessing right now, okay, this is not going to be easy. This is not going to be a flash in the pan where we're going to rally back up in a, you know, what people are calling a V recovery inside of stocks. Yes. Okay. The past few weeks, we saw a rip and rally to the upside unquestionably. Now, I call it a little bit different than that. I actually look at what happened over the last couple of weeks, almost climbing, you know, rungs of a ladder back to the upside, specifically their gravity points, which again, we'll detail here in just a couple of moments, but I cannot stress enough Patience is going to be necessary, especially if you are looking to, you know, if you will, bottom fish this marketplace, which kind of seems like based on the emails, that's what everybody's kind of looking for. You're looking for the deal out there. Should I go out and buy Starbucks? Come on, they're going to reopen over here. Yeah, they're going to reopen to what? And I don't want you to think about that for a second. I'll use Starbucks, you know, as a little bit of an analogy in this. So Starbucks is going to start reopening stores. And at the meanwhile, the airlines just turned around. And now if you fly within the United States, of course, you're going to have to wear uh, a mask on airlines. Okay. You think that's going to impede upon the airline business? Of course it is. And the airlines traded down substantially. I mean, quite ironically, some of the airlines had horrific earnings this week, but traded down more because of, well, wearing masks. What do you think the impact of that's going to be on something like Starbucks business? And yet, meanwhile, while all of this is unfolding, no matter what occurs, if the market starts to sell off, everybody assumes that the bag of risk is going to be held by none other than the financials, which are taking an outright beating again inside of today's markets. As I said, there are so many moving pieces to this puzzle that you're going to have to let things evolve. And I don't want you to feel that you're missing opportunities. There's huge opportunities. We hit, you know, just a killer ratio back spread in the IWM this week. We've hit in numerous, you know, uh, in out spreads and we just keep going with it. But for right now, okay, sit tight when the buying opportunities come, okay, and there will be buying opportunities and there will be opportunities to get long, okay, we'll be there for them. And we'll be there with a lot of cash in hand. I feel like everybody's rushing in. These are the first people to rush into a fire. They have no idea what they're even running into right now effectively to buy. Listen, risk, it's going to take some time to unfold. Why? Well, a large portion of that is the Fed, okay, just squashed us with $2.5 trillion, right? They're suppressing all of the risk in the marketplace. And we're actually going to find out here real soon, possibly, if that's going to be enough. With that, let's get down to it. Let's look at uh, some charts, a couple of trade ideas. 
All right, let's get down to it, to the charts and trades we go. You know, here we are on a Friday afternoon. There are literally two minutes left inside of your trading day. And again, it does appear that the sellers are very much in control right now. S&Ps are down some 86 handles into this cash close, which is to the tune of 3%. And listen, 3%. That's what we term statistically significant, but it's the NASDAQ that actually took the brunt of the hit today. But meanwhile, oof, I don't care who you are, the Russell, that has got to hurt. One of the first points that I want to make in the, this weekend's update here, when we start getting to, uh, to really some of the charts and some of the trades, you got to look at what we term gravity points. Gravity points, they're once again, they're driving trade, okay? They are in the driver's seat. If you're unfamiliar with gravity points, let me cruise over to the S&P futures here. And uh, well, let's, you gotta get familiar. The gravity points are specified levels. They're kind of levels onto which, okay, big trading firms carry risk. The gravity points, all right, are areas that were actually and literally pulled into it. It's kind of a concentric area of risk where I kind of call it like the risk happy point. And effectively, for those of you that speak uh, trader geek, what you get at a particular gravity point right here happens to be none other than the 2842 down below over here is 2811. And people, we are really adhering to these. The gravity point is an area that, you know, one trading firm's got a little bit of short delta, another trading firm's got some long delta. It's the happy point in the middle where they're not having to necessarily hedge higher or lower. So we actually get stuck almost like a seam for a moment. Every time we hit one of these gravity points, it's literally a 50-50 shot whether we go higher or lower. Now that you don't exactly love, right? When I'm like, no, it's a 50-50 opportunity every single time we hit one of these gravity points. Yes, but after we actually break off the gravity point, okay, it's a fun ride down, for instance, to 2811 or from 2842 back up. And again, get familiar with these gravity points because trade is driving around them. In fact, I think a better way to look at this is to look at a 30-day, one-hour. Again, a 30-day, one-hour and it really kind of exemplifies, there's the closing bell on this Friday. The week is over. But um, these S&Ps and taking a look at them, this really exemplifies this. Um, the last 30 days, of course, has been a rally from what has been a hideous bottom, obviously, in late March. And as I said, it's kind of like climbing rungs of a ladder. I'm less inclined to call this a, a rally. It's just more volatility, if you will, but it happens to be to the upside. Now, one of the things, though, that's that's really striking about these gravity points is, and, and I, you know, I don't want to uh, discredit myself in here, but I'm going to for a second, okay? The marketplace is adhering to specific levels, levels that I myself have picked out. These are not levels, you know, there's no studies for this and the, these gravity points only exist inside of the S&P futures, but these are levels like, and the point that I'll make with this, okay, the markets are still adhering to these levels, which means things are not necessarily all that bad. When you got a monkey sitting behind a desk and he can pick out and say, hey, today we're likely to close in and around, you know, what, the 2842 or the 2811. And by the way, yes, the bell went off and we came off the 2811, but give it a little time, we may actually drive right back down to 2811 before this thing is done. Remember, the futures are open, okay? after the marketplace. So if you're not familiar with the gravity points, I, I just, I got to reiterate that again, get familiar with them. The levels are on your screen right now. This is a link that we actually give to all the Theotrade clientele. All right. The next thing I want to, uh, to of course, bring to your attention in the, uh, the week at large, let's actually cruise over to the SPX for this in particular. Okay. The Fed speaks and uh, that's when people started to sell. So how ironic. So again, the Fed has been on this all out, what I term shock and awe campaign. In just the last couple of weeks, we're at 2.5 trillion. Yeah, that's with a T. I don't even have to write it out. $2.5 trillion has been added to the Fed balance sheet. Yeah, that's a lot of printing press over there. But the interesting thing is this is the first scheduled meeting they've had. And here it was on uh, on Wednesday. And right after that, there was sell side activity. Now, I don't necessarily attribute that people, okay, to the Fed. Uh, the central bankers, okay, maybe are not all on the same page. And the central bankers, in my opinion, they're not even reading from the exact same book, which sparked some of the sell side activity. And again, strictly in my opinion, because everybody likes to know what's going on in this marketplace. The ECB, the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde had some comments. Those comments, I mean, they struck fear into the heart 
of everybody that listened to them. I mean, effectively, it's the most serious, you know, implications ever economically faced in Europe, okay, in the history of Europe, not just the history of the, uh, you know, the European Central Bank or the Euro. Nevertheless, okay, if the comments were not exactly met uh, well, and again, you're hearing the exact opposite, of course, from the U.S. Treasury. You're hearing a little bit of the opposite from Jerome Powell. Apparently, Christine Lagarde uh, decided to uh, tell it like it was. And nevertheless, that actually brings up the question here. Okay. What if shock and awe starts to fail? And we may actually see the beginnings of that. The point that I'm making this, and the reason I really wanted to kick this off is, you know, a lot of people look at this rally and they say it's completely and totally the Fed. Um, I actually will disagree with that. Obviously, the Fed, you realize, has kind of got your back right now, right? You felt pretty good after this huge sell-off, and the Fed's got the back. Let's actually clean up the chart here and actually cruise over to the spiders for a second. So you're thinking to yourself, the Fed has got my back after all of this. We rebound huge. Again, I believe that this is a lot of retail clients that are bottom fishing. There's still some stock buy, uh, buybacks going on. Meanwhile, okay, we actually grind to the upside. We grind to the upside, though, on uh, critically low volume. Keep an eye on that. Critically low volume. Of course, much heavier volume in terms of double. No, 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 no. The volume was triple when we were in seeing the volatility to the downside. This upside over here, look at this. The spiders have dropped to about 100 million uh, a day. And that's important. It's very important to be able to uh, to see that. Okay, so the Fed comes in with their shock and awe campaign. All the central banks are printing right now. You can pretty much hear the press is going and we start to have some sell side activity. Now, this is the point you should be worried. And that's why a moment ago on the video, I was saying, let this thing evolve. Because right now I'm going to tell you myself, okay, I'm trading in an account with oh, about $750,000 uh, between two accounts here at, uh, at TD Ameritrade. Uh, brokerage firms, pretty much I've got some capital scattered everywhere. Nevertheless, okay, right now, and I don't mind uh, displaying this, right now I have very minimal allocations. Uh, one of my accounts happens to be what they call a portfolio margin account. Nevertheless, okay, very minimal allocations. In fact, uh, net net my entire margin in here, okay, I like again. Full Monty, people. I like to disclose everything. Okay, there it is. I'm less than eighty thousand dollars. Okay. Now again, some of this does have portfolio margin, but it's neither here nor there. This is an account. Okay, net net. That's closer to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars right now. Okay, and I'm not tying up at what ten percent of it. And I can still do some damage though in terms of P&L on the day. You know, it's fifty-eight hundred dollars of P&L with only tying up seventy-six thousand dollars. It's not half bad. But the reason I'm displaying that. Okay, and I want you to see, you know, what kind of capital I have at risk, because right now is the dangerous point. Okay, this is the first time now that we've seen again some sell side activity, and as we start to come back down, clearly people are going to try to buy and they're going to try to bid here and they're going to try to bid here. We could keep selling and we could sell off into the abyss. And right now, I'm going to use defined risk strategies, and I think that's absolutely critical. Okay, with everything that we've seen, again, you have to ask yourself, and I'm not telling you it's going to fail. But what if shock and awe fails? Okay. Yeah, again, the Fed basically said that they would stop at nothing. And they're just going to continue to print. That doesn't necessarily spur okay, anything in the economy. You know, we've seen that in Japan. Japan has thrown everything, including the kitchen sink, at the problem there. And they're still okay, sliding. And they're still seeing volatility. And that's been going on now for decades. Reminder, data this week is brutal. But the interesting thing was like the data... Okay, the data didn't really necessarily spark the sell side activity. The sell side activity was going on before that. Again, I believe it was Christine Lagarde and the ECB. We're at 30 million jobs in counting. Next Friday, we're actually going to get the employment report. But quite frankly, I think the initial jobless claims is probably better at this point than the employment report. The employment report, like the cutoff is like halfway through the month. So we're going to get data through, I believe it's like April 16th. Meanwhile, Q1 GDP was minus 4.8%. Okay, that uh, that uh, that's not gonna look very good, people. There's nothing good I can say about uh, you know Q1 GDP. But when they do say you know when did the recession start? Obviously, it started in Q1 uh, GDP. So data is brutal. Uh, again, we're seeing some sell side activity. Where do we go from here? Well, now we're going to start to talk about individual sectors. Right now, for me, okay, I am very much like centric to sectors. Okay. I'm looking at the S and P's and I'm, I'm watching overall, you know, index products. And obviously I'm watching the S and P's and the NASDAQ, you know, against the Russell over here, but 
I am very, very sector specific right now because it's sectors that are really, they interest me, especially when we're seeing high degrees, okay, of correlation. What high degrees of correlation, what does that really amount to? I talk about this just, you know, incessantly. For the most part, you know, you don't have to look at individual stocks. Oh, there's four stocks up, okay? Everything's down. This is like the quintessential all down day. This is kind of what we call a full court press. And therefore, okay, if everything is going to move in relative tandem with the S&Ps, okay, it matters what sectors are strongest, what sectors are weakest. And with that, I'm actually going to start with uh, oil, energy sector. I've had a tremendous number of questions regarding oil lately because oil had a wild bid back to the upside. So look at the big bid under oil after what became a catastrophe, of course, uh, last week. Oil actually bid, oh, let's just call it the 12 region and shot basically back up to 20. Is that enough of a move to the upside inside of oil? At the exact same time, though, that oil was ripping back to the upside, of course, you had many that are in the oil services Okay, specifically the energy sector, that is not good. So the energy sector has had a uh, pretty spectacular bounce back to the upside after being down okay, to the likes of what, 64, 65%. This thing has bounced back. And again, this is where a lot of people are asking me, should I get long now? Oil's bounced. And the answer is absolutely not. We have a number, okay, a number of firms in the energy sector that literally this weekend are filing, okay? They are filing for bankruptcy. Much more is going to evolve inside of the oil. If you're curious in the oil sector, when I might want to get involved, well, first of all, I need to tell you, I am involved. I am long the XLE right now, and I'm long XOP. Again, anything that I'm going to discuss in here, of course, I'm going to have positions in. So I'm long, okay, energy sector in two different ways, both in the ETF, okay? I want to continue to build a position but I'm going to need this thing to sell off. And now you've got to actually crack some of the lows before that I'm even going to consider it. And I want you guys to know that that's going to be true. Okay. And relative in almost every product, if I'm going to get long, we got to crack through some of the lows out there moving, uh, moving right along over here. Okay. Is it uh text time? It's tech time people. Let's talk a little bit about the monsters of tech. This is actually a conglomerate symbol that I built. One of the reasons I've been uh, focusing on the monsters of tech, you realize Okay. When I say the monsters of tech, I'm talking about the Facebook, the Apple, the Microsoft, the Google, the Amazon this conglomerate symbol that I built. And the thing is a 5% on a year to date basis. And th the only point that I'm making over here is that if the marketplace as a whole is going to turn back around and sell off, okay, it has to be done on the back of tech. Okay. And sure enough. Okay. And we've been spot on with this. And again, I have been building, okay a number of short positions inside of technology. Okay. And I'll just, you know, I'll go right through it. I'm actually short Microsoft. Okay. I just recently put this position on. How is it? Massively unchanged. I've actually built a short position inside of Facebook. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now, I built that short position here. I'm upside down. I wanted the risk before earnings. So I built a short position inside of Facebook. It popped to the upside. Remember in my short positions, I'm actually using deep in the money puts as synthetic short stock replacements so I could do it inside of my IRA. The other position I've actually got short in terms of tech happens to be none other than Intel. Okay, Intel, how's that one going? Ah, there we're actually ahead of the game. You know, in looking at tech, I think we're going to know it's a lot more is going to unfold this next week. Okay, but tech definitely saw some sell side activity day to the tune. Okay, monsters of tech were actually down 3.5%. I think that uh, Apple, Amazon, okay, even Facebook, Everybody was surprised when some of the earnings came out and more surprised about how these underlyings reacted. But make no two ways about this, okay? This is for the S&Ps for a second here. Go back to the S&Ps. If the S&Ps are going to continue, if we're going to start to make that leg back to the downside, however hideous it might be, it has got to be done on the back of technology. I've reiterated that in almost every single video. You know, you had a marketplace on Wednesday, and I titled the video on Wednesday, A Marketplace in Denial. Well, maybe some of that done. denial is uh, coming to fruition, admitting it is the first step, people. So we've explored my shorts, which are, again, Microsoft. That's, by the way, exploring my shorts. That is specific, okay, to just technology. I am just in Microsoft in the short position, okay, Intel. And of course, Facebook, those are the three shorts that I've actually selected right now inside of technology. Obviously, I've got other positions, both long and short. You know, the other point that I wanted to make is uh, tech is selling. But one of the things that really surprised me here is that um, 
you really, you got hit hard inside of the financials again. And again, as I was saying in the video a moment ago, it doesn't seem to matter what happens in this marketplace when risk hits. It's always like the financials, they're the cause, they're the cause. And small caps, every time we start to sell off the small caps, they got hammered. Okay. By the way, we had some spectacular positions inside of the Russell. Okay. In fact, that's my next point. I'm out of the long Russell positions. We hit a ratio, uh, a ratio back spread inside. Let me actually detail this in one of the accounts over here. So I'll actually come over to the, uh, to the monitor tab. I'll cruise over to the account statement and actually pull up the IWM. Here's uh, back ratios inside of the IWM, and I opened up a bunch of them, but uh, put on for like 43 cent credit, uh, 38 cent credit, 38 cent credit, 37 cent credit, closed anywhere from $1.85 all the way up to $4.97, uh, all of it effectively done inside of a very very short threshold of uh, of trade but i am now out of the ratio back spread again out of the ratio back spread specifically inside of the iwm and not a moment too soon because those s and p's uh really came back off and dragged the russell and the iwm along with it all right next one on the docket over here roll the cat what does that even mean okay rolling caterpillar for those of you that have been around and watching these videos for a couple of weeks i reshorted caterpillar right up here and after I reshorted Caterpillar, in fact, uh, I'll detail the trade, I took the trade and I bounced it from June into July. And people, they were some magnificent, just magnificent rolls. And I can come in here and I can actually detach my entire order book, if you guys don't mind for a second, because uh, some people, of course, are going to ask questions, you know, about some of these rolls. I was... I was a trading fool today, all right? I mean, I definitely executed a couple of positions. This is just one account, but I wanted to show you the Caterpillar position right here. I rolled the Caterpillar position, only holding it for a couple of weeks for 13.26. Again, I'll just create the duplicate order. I rolled that thing for 13.26. That is, I moved my deep in the money option from June out to July. So uh, I rolled the cat, I rolled the cat on a nice down move. We are going to let this position stand, okay? Caterpillar sells off, hey, Again, it's got to crest through some of the lows before I'm actually going to get out of there. The next one on the docket here happens to uh, deal with Home Depot. I stepped in and shorted Home Depot. Now, I love the conversations that I've had with a lot of our clientele about Home Depot because yesterday is when I actually came in here and started shorting Home Depot, and I haven't stopped. I've built uh, quite the little position in Home Depot. And people said, why? Why would you short Home Depot? Okay, because I've, I've legitimately got about, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 emails about this and people in the chat room here at Theotrade and they said, I've gone to Home Depot. I'm home. I'm, you know, I'm quarantined at home. I've been doing home improvement. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did I ask you for your fundamental analysis? Do I even believe in fundamentals right now? Absolutely not. Okay, the bottom line with Home Depot, it is crushing in terms of outperformance of a sector that's in trouble. Okay. If you look at the sector itself, you look at something like XHB. Now, this is the home builder sector. The home builder sector is down 22%. If you look at the individual home builders, which, by the way, they buy a lot of stuff at Home Depot. Uh, Toll Brothers, down some 40%. Okay, I can pull up Pulte. I can go home builder after home builder after home builder. They're all getting hammered. Okay. And then we talk about 30 million you know, in terms of jobless claims out there, but you're right. It'll hold it up. It has nothing to do with that. I am not making a fundamental case in Home Depot. Bottom line is just this. If the s and P's sell off, what do they do? They go after the strongest. Okay. This is the strongest. Why am I short Home Depot? Because I'll want to be. I want to be short Home Depot. I've actually got an in-out spread here, but more importantly, I built a duration position and this is not an inexpensive trade. This is actually some heavy risk. I actually built that position inside of Home Depot looking for not just a little bit of downside people. Okay. I want to see some, uh, some hideous nature inside of Home Depot. This is going to be a much longer duration position. Nevertheless, you'll hear me update this, uh, from time to time. Next one on the docket would have to be, uh, XLP, which is consumer staples, consumer staples, roll baby roll looks like it's rolling back over the reason i wanted to bring consumer staples it too has been really strong on a relative basis also when you start looking at stocks like your you know your costcos okay your costcos it's rolling over right now your walmarts they're rolling over right now look at consumer staples because the xlp the xlp is actually holding up a little bit better than maybe a costco or Walmart right now. This this might still give you some time to actually jump on uh, jump on a short position inside of the XLP. All right, onward and upward from there. The SPX expected move, of course, last week. Well, let's actually detail it. Last week, and uh, I'll take that off the uh, percentage terms. Last week we had uh, just shy of a hundred dollar expected move. 
Interestingly enough, we cracked outside the expected move on Wednesday. Not only did we pull back in it, I mean, net net on the week, we finished massively unchanged. I mean, the week started here and ended here. <laughs> For the most part, what I'm saying about that is the week at large was down, but it was mildly down, okay, on the SPX. The week before that was also, okay, a very mild down move. So we've had two down weeks in a row. Again, for the most part, what we've actually had, okay, are two weeks where we've been completely unchanged. I would not expect that to uh, to happen a third week in a row. If you take a look at the SPX, the coming week, we're now looking at about, and again, you'll see there's no expected move. That's because I haven't, uh, haven't filled it in here just yet. But this next week, oh, it looks like we're going to be right around, okay, $107 expected move, 107 higher, 107 lower. But I want to reiterate again, okay, 11 out of the last 16 weeks have seen moves outside the expected move, which means we're still, we're not in a premium seller's market. Quite ironically, also this week, I'll throw this little tidbit in here because I did a kind of a fun trade this week. I bought iron condors this week. That's right. That's right, people. You see that on the put side? Don bought premium this week, actually bought an iron condor, okay? And the irony is it's not doing half bad right now as the marketplace blew to the upside, now blowing to the downside, volatility's picking up, buying an iron condor. That's right. I am a premium buyer inside of this marketplace and you should know just that. Listen, again, what I talked about in the video, this is critical. Let things evolve, okay? Let it unfold. The Fed, okay? Great, they're behind the marketplace 100%, but it doesn't matter. We've seen this movie before. Let this marketplace unfold. We are at a really critical juncture. We just saw some sell side activity kick back in, right? Listen, uh, two days of selling means absolutely nothing. You gotta feel the fear in this market before this thing is over. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful weekend, bye-bye.